So this is question 7.2. It looks quite interesting. So question, or let me just highlight the important parts. Uh, o is the center, and they've said that these two lines are the same, and then they've also spoken about a tangent, and the tangent is a PT over here. So the first question for one mark says, why is P2, angle P2, equal to angle R? Well, that's just because of the uh, angles in the same segment. Because if I look at this uh, segment, um, chord, sorry, this one here, then I know that that chord can go there, but it can also go there. So it's almost like we've got that, some people call it the butterfly or the bow tie. Um, can you see it? It's, it's this and this. Um, you've got to look out for thing, for shapes like this in the test. Uh, you can get shapes like this, for example. Um, in this example, it's more like this. See, so you can also get that type of shape happening where these two are the same. So that's what we're getting here. So we can just say the reason is angles in same segment, like that. Then the next one for four marks says prove that PQ, so where's PQ? PQ is over here. Prove that PQ bisects angle TPS, TPS, so TPS is here. So what this question means is prove that this pink line cuts these two exactly in half. So what they're actually trying to say is that P3 must be the same as P2. They want us to prove that P3 is the same as P2. So let's quickly write that for ourselves. Is that the same? That is the goal for this question. So whenever I see a tangent, remember they told us there's a tangent here, then I always look out for the tan chord theorem tan chord theorem. And the tan chord theorem tells us that if you have a tangent and a chord, so here's the chord, then what you do is you look at the angle in between, which is P3, and then you try to see where does that chord go. Well, that chord goes over here. So I can definitely say that P3 is the same as angle S1, and that's just the tan chord theorem. And if you struggle with any of these concepts, like the tan chord theorem, then you've got to go look for my other videos on that. And so you can help yourself. Um, you can you can try to understand those parts a little bit better, because then these whole questions become a lot easier for you. Because I do know a lot of students struggle with the tan chord theorem. Okay, so let's just keep that in mind. We now know that these two are the same. But now, they've told us that these two lines are the same. Now there is a theorem that tells us in Euclidean circle geometry that when two chords are the same length, the angles that they make are also the same. Or you can even think of this as an isosceles triangle. Can you see it? Look here. There's an isosceles triangle there. So if this one is the same as this one, then it means that P2 is the same as S1. So we can say P2 is equal to S1, and that's just because of um, angles opposite equal sides. There are other ways that you could have done this using the equal chords, equal angles um, theorem, but you can also do it like this. So look at what has happened. We said that P3 is the same as S1, but S1 is the same as P2. So therefore, the conclusion of that is that P2 is the same as P3. Now, moving on to 7.2.3 for two marks. Determine POQ in terms of Y. POQ, where's POQ? Oh, here it is here. In terms of Y. Okay, well, what we have here is we've got this type of theorem happening. So, for example, if I have a circle and I have this, then if this is the center, then we know that this angle is always double. So if this is 2x, then this is x. But sometimes that can go a little bit sideways. Let me show you what I mean. It also gets situations where it does this. But now this one is the center angle, and this one is on the circumference. So if this one is 2x, then this one will be x. So if I look here, if I 
if I look at this baseline, which is the bottom of this triangle, I can see that that baseline is also going towards here, and it's also going towards here. So that means that this angle is double S1. So I can say that angle O is, or POQ rather, let me rather say POQ, is double, two times, uh, angle S1. And that's just because of angle at center equals two times angle at circumference. Okay, but now we also know that S1 is equal to, is equal to, um, will be equal to Y. Because remember we said that, we said earlier that P2 is equal to Y, we proved that there, but P2 is the same as S1. So we can say here proven, and therefore we can say that angle POQ is going to be 2 times S1, so it'll be 2Y. Two 2Y two is the answer for that one. 7.2.4 prove that PT is a tangent to the circle that passes through POA. So the circle, these ones are always weird, I always battle to draw these ones. The circle that passes through POA. So it would be something like that. Okay, so there's the circle and they want to know, is this line over here the tangent? So when they do this guys, they're talking about tan chord theorem. So if you go look for the um, angle that is between the tangent and a chord, it would be it would be this tangent, obviously, that's the tangent we're looking at, and it will probably be, um, or we can't use, we can't use this angle over here, because then you would have to use this chord. But this chord doesn't go anywhere in that circle. So we're probably gonna have to use this entire angle here, because then what we can do is we can use this chord. Okay, so this whole angle is P2 and P3, so that's 2Y, so we can say that angle SPT is equal to 2Y, because that's P2 plus P3, and we've already proved that those are both Y, and then we need to look at the tan chord theorem, and so what we can see is that if you use the tan chord theorem, it's going to give you 2Y over here. And we can say that angle O is also equal to 2Y. That was already proven. Should say proven here already. And then we can say therefore, because the tan chord theorem is working, we can say um, we can say that PT is a tangent to the circle through POA because of the converse, meaning the opposite of the tan chord theorem. Okay, so that's quite a tricky one. You might just have to pause and look at that carefully yourself. Um, make sure that you can understand that one. And then the last question, prove that angle OAP, OAP, where's that? Oh, that's this one, is a 90 degree angle. So this 7.2.5 took me a bit of time to look um, and to see it, but what I eventually saw was that OP is a radius. And we know that PT is a tangent. So because of that, we know that this whole angle is 90 degrees. So let's say that. So we can say o angle OPT equals to 90 degrees. And that's just because of the tangent is always perpendicular to a radius. So we can go work out P1. So we can say that P1 is equal to 90 minus P2 minus P3. And so that's equal to 90 minus Y minus Y. And so that's 90 minus 2Y. So now we can easily work out OAP because we can work inside this triangle now because we have P1 is 90 minus 2Y. We can say that angle OAP is equal to 180 minus 2Y minus 90 minus 2Y and that's because of sum of angles in a triangle. And so if we go work that out we would find that it's going to be equal to 180 minus 2Y minus 90 plus 2Y and so you're going to end up with 90 degrees.